what advice do you have for somebody that is trying to stay firm upon their religion but is constantly surrounded by bad influences? How do you get away from bad influences? What is the best type of tawbah? Then alhamdulillah, and again there's a few questions that is similar to that with regards to uh, individuals that fall into the same sin repeatedly. Then alhamdulillah, again, if we look in the Quran and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we find alhamdulillah an answer for these issues. And that is why the Quran and the sunnah is guidance. They are guidance for the whole of mankind. And it's upon every Muslim and Muslimah to study the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said Ma anzalallahu da'an that Allah Azzawajal did not send down any disease except that he sent down along with it a cure, a remedy. And now we find Alhamdulillah we know that the Quran is a shifa. The Quran is a cure, a cure for physical ailments and likewise spiritual diseases. Naam. So Alhamdulillah, these questions have been answered and addressed in the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In detail, with specific instructions. What does someone do if they keep falling into the same sin? They keep disobeying Allah Azza wa Jal. They repent. And as we heard, it's possible that someone, Naam, they can repent sincerely, but they end up falling back into the same sin. Then we have the hadith, the famous hadith about the man who killed 99 people. When he went to the scholar, look, the alim, mashallah, tabarakallah, the alim, the scholar has insight. The alim has insight and understanding. And the alim, the scholar, is going to give advice that may benefit in that area, but also areas that have led to that. Such as the book at Dawa Dawa, Disease and the Cure of Ibn al Qayyim, Rahimahullah. Ibn al Qayyim wrote a whole book because a person asked him a question. The person asked Ibn al Qayyim a question and he said that he was falling into something, a major sin, and he feared that if he was to continue, then it would destroy his worldly affairs and his hereafter. Ibn al Qayyim, Rahmatullah, he wrote a whole book in response to that one question. This is the scholars. And this is the benefit of the scholars. And that is why we must maintain a connection with them. And we're talking about the real scholars. Those who have knowledge, wisdom and insight. Not just somebody that has a degree. So in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, when the man who killed at that time, he had ended up killing a hundred people because of the answer of the abid, the worshiper who was ignorant. When he went to the scholar, the scholar Nam told him, yes, no one can come between you and repentance. So yes, you can repent. When the man he asked about himself, is there any repentance? The scholar said, yes, no one can come between you and repentance. But the scholar gave additional advice. What was the advice that he gave? He said, in tariq ila ardi kada wa kada, go to this land. He, why, was, why did he advise him to go to another land? Again, this is further advice. Because the scholar has insight, wisdom, maybe in some of the reasons that have led to this, this type of behavior. The scholar said, فَإِنَّ بِهَا أُنَاسًا يَعْبُدُونَ اللَّهَ فَعْبُدِ اللَّهَ مَعَهُمْ He said, because in that land, which he was advising the man to go to, he said, you have a people that worship Allah alone. Go to them, worship Allah with them. وَلَا تَرْجِعْ إِلَىٰ أَرْضِكْ Don't go back to your land. Don't, don't go back to your land. Why? It's an evil land. Meaning, and the ulama they derive from that, your, our surroundings has an effect upon us. And the ulama they've said, you find it in Mukhtasaru min Hajil Qasidin, the character is a thief. And Shaykh al Albani rahimahullah used to mention that. And the ulama before him have mentioned it, the character is a thief. The character, naam, it will steal from those who are around you and you may not even know. You may not be aware of it, but you're being affected by those who are around you. So my advice to the questioner, Naam, firstly, find righteous people, and they exist. Wherever you live in the world, Alhamdulillah, you will find more than likely people who are salihun, righteous. Those people, where will you find them? 
you will find them in the masajid of Allah. Allah tells us in the Quran, إِنَّمَا يَعْمُرُ مَسَاجِدَ اللَّهِ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ Those who inhabit, those who maintain the masajid of Allah, those who believe in Allah on the last day, be with them, study with them, maintain a friendship with them. And that will help you by the will of Allah جل, to stay away from those things. Maybe one of the youth here, maybe you're affected by the streets and it's difficult because of maybe your associates or maybe the people that you know. Go back, go to a Muslim country for a few years. Go and study. Not for just two months because that period of time is very short. Allah knows best will you really benefit and sever those links. Go away for a few years, three years, two years. Go and study. And you don't know that maybe you leave something for Allah and the doors that Allah will open for you. And hopefully Allah will bless you to outgrow the immaturity of being attracted to that foolishness that many times is only going to lead to prison or is going to lead to you being killed or killing somebody else. And obviously it's something that the shaitan beautifies. So yes, na'am, look at the reasons that are causing you to fall in that sin. Is it because you're hanging around with certain people? If so, you need to cut them off for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. Look, Shaykh Abdul Ila Habidahullah, he spoke about loving for Allah. In the famous dua, what do we say? Oh Allah, as'aluka hubbak, wa hubba man yuhibbak. Oh Allah, we, we ask you for the love of you, and the, we ask you for love of those who love you, and we ask you for love of everything that is going to lead to loving you. Showing us the importance of what? That we love for Allah. Naam. And we love those whom Allah loves. So look for the people that Allah loves and love them and try and be with them. And again, they are the righteous from the creation of Allah Azza wa And again, you have them in nearly every place that exists, even if there are a few. And nobody should say, you know what, I'm young. In this, you know, many times in our societies, people, you know, they treat adults. You might have an 18-year-old. In another country, he may be the head of the family, providing for the family. Sadly, you know, in some places, they treat this person like he's a child, like he hasn't reached taklif, that he's not accountable. No, that person's accountable. Look in the Quran, the people of the cave. You have a, a story there in the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. These individuals were so righteous that they separated themselves from those who were associated partners with Allah Azza wa Jal and they were a young age. And every Jum'ah, it's a sunnah, naam, to recite Surah Al-Kahf. So we're reading that story. What do we read? We read about a group of the youth, young people, that separated themselves from society because they were associating partners with Allah Azza wa and Allah preserved them and protected them in many ways. Allah preserved them and protected them in many ways and raised them over the rest of the creation who were present at their time because still... The story is being recited today in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So nam, alhamdulillah, leave, for example, those things that are causing you to fall into that sin. And look for righteous people. Look for people who are striving to please Allah azza wa jal, regardless of their color and regardless of their race. Because we don't have asabiyah, we don't have qawmiya, tribalism or nationality or anything like that in al-Islam. That is from the affairs of jahiliyyah. Whoever they are, wherever they are, if they fear Allah as he deserves to be feared, look, the scholar said, ma'ahum. Be with the Muwahideen, the people of Tawheed, and worship Allah with them. We find that in the Quran. Wasbir nafsak. Look, Allah is addressing the Prophet. Be patient. Wasbir nafsaka ma'alladina yad'una rabbahum. If that's the Prophet. Allah commanded him, be patient with those who call upon their Lord in the morning and the evenings. This is applicable to everyone else. More so, to be with those people who are striving to fear Allah Azza wa And again, that doesn't matter about age even. Because sometimes even us, when we reach our 40s and our 50s, you know, sometimes there is the, a chance, some of us we become a bit, you know, more negligent. Or lazy. In reality, the older you become, the closer that you are getting to the grave. So the more that we should be striving in terms of learning and sacrifice for the sake of Allah Azza wa Look at the companions. How was Umar radiallahu anhu when he accepted Islam? How was Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu when he accepted Islam? And others from the companions who were senior in age. 
The older we get, the more serious and dedicated we should become. Naam. 